Now to your community focus at four. Today we are talking all things Providence and we're joined live in studio today by Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here. So Mayor, I want to start with the topic of violence that we've continued to see in the capital city. You said back in August to my colleague Matt Paddock, quote, we are safer today than we have ever been. But as of the latest statistics from the Providence Police Department, homicides are up 40% compared to last year, 62% compared to the five-year average. How do you square what you said to what the data shows? Yeah, that's a crazy. So, so uh, let's look at the data. So what we have in Providence, unfortunately, is a g gun crime problem. Uh, but um, when you look at non-crime, uh, non-guns, so you look at robberies, you look at burglaries, those are actually at record low levels. So it's certain kinds of crimes that are up. And I think most people ask themselves, you know, is Providence safe if I, if I visit? I think most people ask themselves, you know, what are your chances of being the victim of random crime? And your chances of being a victim of random crime in Providence are lower today than they have ever been. That's the good news. The bad news is that we do have a gun crime problem. And, uh, you know, frankly, we just have too many guns out there on the streets. Too many people that have lost hope and are turning to violence and to guns to solve their problems and to solve their disputes. And that's something that we're constantly working on. But, you know, the way that I think about this and, you know, a good analogy is, you know, whenever there's a plane crash, you know, there's a plane, it's a terrible tragedy and you do everything you can to investigate what happened to, to make sure that you're safer going forward and we do that. But at the same time, you also have to remind people that flying is infinitely more safer than even driving throughout the city. And that's what I want to, uh, to, to assure people uh, throughout the city and the state, that if you come to visit or if you live in the city, your chances of being the victim of violent crime are much lower than, or, or, or gun crime are much lower than if you were driving your car. Mayor, we've been looking at video of um, the police department on a number of, of crime scenes that we've covered over the last year. The department just graduated 49 new recruits in, yeah. the, in the latest class. Um, will you propose funding for another 50 in your final budget as mayor? Yeah, that's exactly uh, uh, what we've done. So in my next to last, uh, we put the funding in there for the recruitment of it with the idea that in the next budget, we'll have it in there to not just you know take those recruits and just have them, but to actually train them up and to be part of the police academy. I think that's a big big piece of it, you know. Um, there's the reality of crime and there's also the perception of crime. And, you know, the reality is that, you know, there, there, there's no or little connection between crime and your number of police officers. In fact, you look at police officers today and we have far less than we had 10 years ago, but there was a lot more crime 10 years ago. And so we have fewer officers and fewer and less crime. But when it comes to perception of crime, you know, people like to see the officers and it, you know, it goes a long way to have officers building relationships with kids, with business owners. It goes a long way to make people feel, feel safer and that's just as important, the perception and the reality. Uh, on that topic of community relations, um, the city council is currently reviewing the hiring of your recreation director to that new community relations major position. Where does that stand and will he be able to re assume that role anytime soon? Yeah, so we're working with the city council and we hope to have him in this position as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, there's been, there's been a lot of questions as to, you know, why a civilian, you know, within, within the ranks. And, you know, I'll, I'll point to uh, Jersey City in New Jersey. They actually hired a, um, a civilian to be the chief of the department. Um, and so, you know, this idea of having a different perspective and a different approach within the police department, I think is, from a policy standpoint, the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, Mike Stevens, the person that we propose, is someone who has long-standing relationships in the community. He's involved in sports and can be a great bridge between the community and the police because everyone will tell you that in order to address the deep challenges that we have, the number one thing, there has to be community trust, right? Change happens at the speed of trust. And uh, that starts with building relationships and you have to, you know, you have to bring, you know, create the bridge and uh, bring those people that can be the bridges into, into the police department that can have those strong you know, police community relationships develop. Um, I want to talk briefly about Kennedy Plaza. Yeah. Uh, it went through kind of a rehab a number of years ago. It feels like there's always mm -hmm. a, maybe we should try this. How do we rework this? What's the plan, the vision right now for that space? Yeah, so the, the plans in the, pl the past, you know, they've, uh, they've been different than what has been before, but it's always remained as you know, the city and the state's central bus hub. And what we're proposing is to uh, really move it forward from that central bus hub. Think about like beautiful cities throughout the country and throughout the world that you know we visit and fall in love with. 
they always have this beautiful public square, civic center right in the heart of town that brings everyone together. We don't have that in Providence. We've never had that. And what we want to do is create that space. And so that means relocating some of the bus berths you know, um, throughout the downtown area so it's just as easy or maybe even easier to get around, but creating that space that draws people together. And you know, when you think about, you know, we're living in a time right now where it seems like the forces that pull us apart are stronger than they've, they've ever been. We need to create those forces and those spaces that create community and bring people together. And that's what this civic center has the potential to be. And so that's why we're thinking of it as a beautiful, connected public park uh, that, um, that's a space that draws people throughout the day and the evening, whether you're young, you're a teenager, you're older, uh, there's something for everyone to do there. And Mayor, less than 30 seconds here. Governor Dan McKee announced he'll be allocating more than $11 million to some new municipal education offices. Do you think they'll be beneficial? I mean, it depends. I, I could see it working in some communities, but take Providence, for example. We already have a robust network of organizations such as PASA, New Urban Arts, City Arts, that are already doing this work. So creating a, a center would be redundant. Um, and so what I would like to see is just investing in the organizations that are already doing this work here. Um, at the end of the day, we want to provide opportunities for our kids, and I totally agree in investing in out-of-school time. At the same time, we need to invest in the in-school time. And you know, again, I, I, I have to point out my disappointment with you know, their failure to do something about the teacher contract. We knew it was the linchpin to turning around the district, and the governor threw away the opportunity to do that. Providence Mayor Jorge Lorza, that's all the time we have with you today. Thanks so much for being here. It's great to be here.